It's almost time to say goodbye to this century. And when we're not being bombarded these days with Y2K horror stories, we're being inundated with lists and more lists, the 100 greatest movies, the 100 greatest inventions, and so on. Someone needed to put the sight, sounds, and sentiment of this American century in perspective. And that's what's going on now at New York City's Whitney Museum, where the first half of an ongoing multimedia exhibit has begun. <laughs> Icons of American painting, photography, and sculpture. They are the early flickerings of Hollywood and the blossoming of Tin Pan Alley and the Broadway musical. They are just some of the jewels of a mammoth exhibition entitled The American Century, Art and Culture, 1900 to 1950. The first of a two-part retrospective at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. If American art of the century had a godmother, it would be Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney, an heiress and an artist in her own right, as painted here in her green pajamas by Robert Henry in 1916. Her rebellious spirit was attracted to the social consciousness and progressive views of the artists and photographers she collected. But when she offered her vast collection of American works to the revered institution of old world classics, the Metropolitan Museum, the Met turned it down flat. It was only American art, after all. So Mrs. Whitney found a way to see to it that American art would be exhibited in a world-class museum. She founded her own and put her name on it. The Whitney's the only museum in this country that's really devoted to asking the question, how can American art from 1900 to the present be best explored through works of art and through an understanding of American culture? Maxwell Anderson is the director of the Whitney Museum. This exhibition actually shows for the first time in depth how those artists were showing that great creative tradition unfold. The exhibition unfolds quite literally in depth. It begins at the top and works its way down with a floor for each era. Barbara Haskell is the curator. Okay, the first period in the exhibition is 1900 to 1919, and it represents America in an age of confidence. And it's characterized for the most part by an embrace of modernity, urbanization, progress, industry, technology, a new America that's in the making, that's reflected in painting, photography, film, by artists who are reflecting this vitality and energy of a new youthful country. Artists captured the faces of the people, along with the faces of technological change. Edward Steichen took the photograph of J.P. Morgan, while Charles Dana Gibson introduced the century's new brand of independent-minded woman. Perhaps the best-known face of the times was of an artist convention wouldn't have considered to be an artist at all. We're looking at a film of Charlie Chaplin in The Immigrant, Matthew Yakubowski is the film and video curator for the exhibition. Well, he's great because he's really uh, understood the language of trying to tell a story without words. And that's why he was so successful in early filmmaking, which had no sound. And what we're showing is that the low art that was at the beginning part of the century today is considered high art. It is, it is uh, perhaps one of the most dominant uh, visual mediums that America has ever created. More than 200 examples of the filmmaker's art are on display at the Whitney. Sometimes just a few seconds of a single film is all it takes to introduce a whole decade. of the exhibition starts with the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, the era of glamour and elegance, streamlined stylization, reflected both in the new city, the skyscrapers that soar and create a new kind of, of skyline for America. Women with bodies 
bob, bobbed hair, short skirts that define what we can, what we call the jazz age. The twenties were a time of great prosperity, and to the artist, everything was grist for the mill, from the mills themselves, right down to the advertising for the products they produced. And when bust followed boom in the 1930s, American artists showed that, too. If any one photograph forever froze the desperation of those times, it was Migrant Mother by Dorothea Lange. And if any one painting offered hope that the bad times would pass, it was American Gothic by Grant Wood. Provides an, an image for America that, that really defined a, a state of mind. The art and culture of the 30s, by and large, portrayed domestic themes, economic distress, the devastation of the Dust Bowl, and the great migration of African Americans from the South to the North. The art that came next was a reaction to trouble from abroad. The 40s were defined by the war. And then with America's entry into the war, the sense of unease and, and disquiet began to inform all the art that was produced and created art that, that reflected the anxiety and turmoil of the world. Photography brought home the realities of war. While artists such as Norman Rockwell were showing the struggle's ideals. And though the end of the war brought jubilation, it also brought new problems. Post-war America is really defined by several things, by on one hand prosperity and a relief from the anxieties of the war and the depression, and on the other hand by an anxiety that, has, that is a product of the bomb. All of which led post-war artists to a new form of expression. This exhibition remains on view until August 22nd. The second half of the century opens in late September. But for those who can't make it up to New York at all, the art can come to you on an innovative website. Perhaps it is fitting that at an exhibition in which so much of the art embodies images of changing technology, the changing technology now embodies images of the art. And whether one visits the exhibition by computer or in person, for curator Barbara Haskell, the art's the thing. Well, I, th I think one of the things the exhibition does is, is to describe the vitality and the, the beauty of American art. And I think no viewer can come to this exhibition without being convinced about the quality about, of American art, which is, in a sense, a vindication of Gertrude Vanderbilt's Whitney's original decision to found a museum.